Now let's talk about timeouts. Uh, the system in the server uh, is set up in such a way that each message goes through a series of uh, trials and retrials if it's rejected at first. So for example, if you send a message, it's gone into the queue, and from the queue it allows you to, it, it's going to try to deliver this message to the target server. Now, if the target server accepts the message, everything's fine, the message is deleted from the queue, marked as delivered, and everything's fine. But if the message is rejected, right? for example, uh, if it's not a permanent reject, a rejection, for example, if you uh, try to deliver a message and your server says uh, no such user exists, right? it cannot be a temporary uh, error because no matter how many t times you try it, this, this user will not all of a sudden appear on the server. So if it doesn't exist, it cannot deliver it. So it's going to be uh, uh, removed from the queue and the reply message will be generated. But if it gives you a temporary error, like for example, I don't know, the server is too busy now, come back later. Or, uh, um, you know, this user is over quota now, come back later when the user clears a bit from his queue and so on. There are many, many different types of temporary errors that could happen with the SMTP server. If this happens, then uh, my SMTP server will be um, holding on to this message and will retry it uh, quite a few times. So the way it retries it is using this delivery strategy and the timeouts. Now, let's discuss the timeouts. First of all, there is a DNS resolution timeout. Anytime that you want to actually get the mail, uh, as you remember, you need to acquire the IP address first, right? Before you do anything, you need to get the IP address of the target server. In some cases, the IP address will be stored already in a DNS cache, and in some cases, it won't. So if it's not, then uh, I need to generate a request to DNS and ask for this IP address. And this is the timeout for this um, request. If it's over five seconds, this is in, uh, in milliseconds. If it's over, than, uh, over five seconds, then um, we just give up. We cannot wait for uh, DNS resolution indefinitely. I should point out that uh, inside the engine itself, it, it's going to retry it a few times. It's going to retry it with one second timeout, then uh, again with three seconds timeout, and then with this five second timeout. Now this timeout is when you open a session. Uh, this is how long you wait for another host to respond. For example, <clears throat> if you connect to yahoo.com, you know the IP address of the yahoo.com, and you want to connect to it, how long will you actually wait for the host to respond to you? And this is set by default to 60 seconds. Now this one is timeout between two consecutive SMTP commands. This is just uh, to prevent um, spamming uh, and uh, you know crashing your server. Let's say um, you have um, somebody who doesn't like your server for some reason. It it could happen. I've seen it happening, uh, especially with, with popular websites. And what they do is they uh, open a connection to your server and never close it then open another connection and never close it, and then open another connection and never close it, right? Let's say they have a multi-threaded um, engine that opens 2,000 connections to your server and they never close it. What will happen then, remember the security one, security tab, you have maximal number of connections to the server. After 100, any additional connection will be rejected. But if the, the perp already opened uh, 100 connections to your server, nobody who has legitimate email uh, to relay will not be able to connect to your server. So this timeout is going to prevent this from happening. This is the timeout between two consecutive commands. So if somebody connects and doesn't do anything for um, 60 seconds, for example, or six minutes, uh, it's going to time out. If he types one command and, and stalls, it's going to time out. Anything, uh, like if you connect and you start doing something and you stop, it's going to time out and uh, throw, the, throw this connection away. So this way you'll be able to free up resources for your server. 
Now, the next one is the delivery strategy. That's the strategy uh, I was talking about uh, when I was talking about how the, the server is delivering each message. This is the number of times I will retry my connection on each of the priorities below. There are three different priorities. So, first priority is, is actually five, but uh, three timeouts. First priority is I try to deliver a message right now, right, immediately. And I try it this many times, however many times you have here. If the message is not delivered after the first try, right, I will wait for 60 seconds, as in here. Right? This is in seconds. Now, I will wait for 60 seconds, try it again. Then wait for another 60 seconds, try it again. And I'll do it, I'll repeat it as many times as you have it here. Every step is repeated as many times as you have it here. So if I type 5, then it will try it for 60 seconds. Then again, try it, wait for 60 seconds. Again, try it, wait for 60 seconds, and so on, five times. If it doesn't deliver it, then there's no sense in you know banging your head against the wall. The server is busy, or obviously it's doing something that's not going to uh, you know fix itself. We need to wait a little bit longer. Then it goes to a slower queue. There is a, a different queue where your message is stored, and it's going to be slower. Now, if the message is not delivered after second after a second priority, right, the message is going to be delivered in the in in the intervals of. 1800 seconds, or you can change it to any number you want. Now, again, it's going to retry it five times. And if after five times it's not delivered, right, as in here, it's going to be delivering it in uh, this type of interval, 43200. And there's 43200 in seconds, it's basically 12 hours, right? So every 12 hours it will retry it five times, that's like 60 hours. And uh, if it doesn't deliver it after 60 hours, then uh, from my point of view, it doesn't make sense to keep it because it's probably never going to be delivered and it's discarded. So as you can see, it takes quite a while for the message to be not delivered at all. Unless uh, the message is rejected right away by the server. Let's say if the server, as I, as I mentioned, says such user is not on the server you know, bug off, and um, you cannot deliver it. If, if the user is not there, he's not there. But if it's a temporary, uh, temporary error, or you just cannot connect to the server, then it's going to retry it many, many, many times. Now, I should point out that most of the servers um, will immediately accept your message. Most of the servers. Some servers have uh, what is called anti-spam software. Uh, it's called gray listing. What they do is... Uh, any connection from any server, they, they tell you immediately, you know, come back later. The calculation here is that spammers will never come back later, or at least most of them won't. Because spammers, it's all about speed, it's all about uh, speed of delivery, right? They don't care um, which emails will accept their message at all. They are a big number game people. So they have to hurry. So if it's delayed intentionally, they will never come back. And the normal people will come back. So some servers that have gray listing installed, you can read more about gray listing on the web, um, they will delay your message all the time. So that's going to compensate for that. And let's come to throttling. The throttling is a mechanism uh, that prevents overloading of your server. Now, your server, server might overload in a situation, for example, I see a lot of people, uh, what they mix up the speed of delivery with the speed of server, right? This server um, is very fast. My server or any server, mail server, is actually pretty fast just because the speed of your CPU is much faster than the speed of your network. The bottleneck in most cases, the bottleneck why your messages might be getting slower uh, to the destination uh, is only because of your the speed of your outgoing connection. For example, if you connect to something like Gmail and, and uh, send your message, Gmail has uh, literally 
entire data centers dedicated to, to their email data centers with thousands of computers with dedicated fiber optic wires connected to them. So you cannot compare. If you're sitting on a residential uh, internet connection, uh, your bottleneck will be uh, your outgoing connection speed. So with that said, uh, in the next video, I'll uh, tell you how to avoid it, how to make it slower intentionally by using throttling.